Good morning, my beautiful diamonds. It's not the morning. Actually, it's 844 uh, on Monday, but I'm going to do this for Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, November 21st. And today we're going to talk about God's abundance, loaves and fish. As a teacher, Jesus often had crowds of people following him to hear his words. On this day, a pretty large crowd was heading towards Jesus and he recognized that they would soon grow hungry. Jesus asked Philip, one of his disciples, how would they be able to buy bread for the crowd to eat? Philip exclaims that it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for everyone to eat. Clearly, Philip saw an impossible situation. He saw needs to be met and not enough resources available to meet them all. Andrew, another one of Jesus' disciples, pointed out that a boy in the crowd had some loaves of bread and some fish. Still, they wondered how would this small amount of food serve the entire crowd. Both disciples were at a dead end. They simply did not know how the crowd would be fed. However, Jesus told them to have the people sit down, and so they did. Jesus took the loaves of bread and fish from the young boy, looked up to his heavenly father, prayed over it, gave thanks, and distributed it and distributed them to the crowd. Clearly, the miracle is that the young boy only had five loaves of bread and two fish, and yet it was enough to feed a crowd of thousands of people. Through this, Jesus teaches us about God's abundance. This miracle was not just about the hungry crowd. It's also meant to show us that God has more than enough and longs to give us whatever we need. So we can go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Jehovah, Yahweh, thank you so much for having more than enough to share with all of us. Help us to rest easy, knowing that you will always supply all our needs. We ask you this, Father, most respectfully and humbly. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Now for our discussion questions. Have you ever had a need so great that you didn't know how it could be filled? So, of course, I thought about that. And I was like, boy, have I. My back was up against the, the wall many times, especially as a single parent. Yet each and every time, that I didn't know how I was going to manage, Jesus Christ, he always provided. He always provided a way and he was always right on time. Never, never, ever was he late. Next, don't forget to uh, talk about, you give that some thought about the time when you was in need and you didn't know how you was going to manage. Uh, never, another uh, uh, question for thought and to discuss, what do you think you would have done if you saw the hungry crowd but had no idea how they would be provided for? <clears throat> so, of course, I thought about that. And I, I said to myself, if I were one of Jesus Christ's disciples, you know, one of his apostles back then, I would have gone to Jesus Christ because I would I would know. I would have gone to Jesus knowing he would have, always he would have the best solution. So I would not sweat the small stuff. And the last question, how have you seen God's abundance in your life? So of course I had to really give that one some thought. So what I did is I have seen Jehovah and Jesus. They have blessed me not only financially, but spiritually, by helping me to get out of that Jehovah's Witness cult, because, you know, I was a Jehovah Witness for well over 55 years. And 
Jesus Christ, he helped pull me out of that. And finally, I'm doing now what Jehovah wants all of us to do, and that is to preach and teach about his son reigning as king. In other words, we're supposed to be preaching and teaching about the good news of the kingdom. Also, when I think about what John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32 states, where Jesus says, So Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you continue to accept and obey my teaching, you are really my followers. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you and set you free. And because of me being pulled out of that cult and I know the truth, I no longer carry that heavy weight and that burden that I had when I was a Jehovah Witness. So Jesus' load, I think about the load that Jesus, you know, requires of me. His load is most certainly very, very light in comparison. So there you have it, my beautiful darlings, my diamonds. And now it's time for your power thoughts for today. Freedom from anxiety. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. Philippians 4, 6. I highly recommend speaking the Word of God when a worry attack comes upon you. Doing this is what it means to wield the two-edged sword against the enemy. See Hebrews 4.12 and Ephesians 6.17. A sword in its sheath won't do any good during an attack. God has given us the sword of His Word so we can use it. Learn scriptures like Philippians 4, 6. And when the enemy attacks, counter his attack with the same weapon that Jesus used, the word. The word coming from a believer's mouth with faith to back it up is the single most effective weapon that can be used to win the war against worry and anxiety. Power Thought I am free from worry and anxiety. That is so beautiful and very empowering. When you think about Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, where it tells us, don't worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need, always giving thanks for what you have. And because you belong to Christ Jesus, God's peace will stand guard over all your thoughts and feelings. His peace can do this far better than our human minds. So when it comes to worrying and anxiety, we are told to take our burden to our Heavenly Father and He hands it over to His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ hands it over to the Holy Spirit. And that's the protocol for handling all of the things that you are experiencing anxiety and worrying about. And don't forget to ask Jehovah God for peace in whatever situation you find yourself in so you don't have to worry. Because remember that when you worry, that implies that you feel that Jesus is not enough. He's not powerful enough or loving enough to take care of you and to do what's best for you. So when it comes to worrying and anxiety, you can put that to a rest. Now for your questions. Who interpreted a famous dream for King Nebuchadnezzar? I can't tell you the scripture because then that would be the answer. Quotation question, as listed in Galatians, what is the fruit of the spirit? Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Romans chapter 12 lists what seven gifts of the spirit? Romans 12, 6 through 8. Remember, it's going to be an amazing day because Jehovah loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. And yes, Sheila True Love loves you as well. Now go out there and sparkle like the beautiful diamonds that God and Christ created you to be.